currently samples are being tested at the Uganda Virus Research Institute in Tebe. On 27 September 2022, there were 24 confirmed cases of Ebola virus disease and five deaths from districts of Murende, Chegegwa, and Kassanda. Six LFA workers were exposed to the index case between 15 to 18 have tested positive to Ebola and they are being managed at Murende and Fort Port Referral Hospitals. The current transmission in Madudu Sabu County in Murende District and in other districts appears to be driven by exposure and barriers and family interaction following the death of people suspected to have succumbed to Ebola. A rapid response team was immediately deployed in Greater Murende region to, to carry out immediate assessment and support the response based on the information from this team. The Minister of Health has classified the country into the risk zones. Category 1 includes Mubende, Chegegwa, and Kassanda district at I-6. Category 2 includes the district borders such as Kakumiro, Changwans, Chiboga, Mitiana, Chivari, Kazo, Gomba, Sembabule, and Chenjojo. However, Kampala and Wakiso are also included in this category because of ease of movement and trade. Category 3, the rest of the country are at the moderate risks. Experts that previously handled the Ebola outbreak in Uguru, Bundibujo, Chivale and Ruero have been deployed to Murende, Kassanda and Cheguegua district to manage patients and control the spread of the virus. The Ebola treatment unit at Murende Regional Referral Hospital is currently at 55 bed capacity for confirmed cases and 80 beds for suspected cases. It has been identified that most of the Ebola cases are coming from Madudu Sabu County, which is the epicenter. Government has decided to set up an additional Ebola treatment unit of 30 beds at Madudu Ever Center 3. This is to avoid the 30 kilometer distance of transferring patients to Movendo Regional Referral Hospital and to improve our patient's care and management. To facilitate this, government will immediately connect Madudu Sabu County to the national electricity grid to provide power to the Sabu County and the LFA Center. Furthermore, a solar power borehole will be stuck at Madudu LFA Center free to provide running water. By Friday 30 September 2022, two mobile diagnostic laboratories will be deployed in Movende District. This will shorten the turnaround time of sample processing and improve timely patient care. Sub-county, which is the epicenter, government has decided to set up an additional Ebola treatment unit of 30 beds at Madrid Health Center 3. This is to avoid the 30 kilometer distance of transferring patients to Mbende Regional Referral Hospital and to improve early patient care and management. To facilitate this, government will immediately connect Madudu sub-county to the national electricity grid to provide power to the sub-county and the health center. Furthermore, a solar-powered borehole will be sunk at Madudu Health Center 3 to provide running water. According to Museven, there is currently no approved vaccine for the Sudan Ebola virus disease. However, there are several vaccines for Ebola Sudan undergoing trials. Government is exploring all options to get safe and effective vaccine as quickly as possible. He also added that he will update the nation as soon as Ebola vaccines become available. Henry Gwase, Nedja University TV. Thank you. I wish you good luck. President Yoram Seveni met with a delegation from Gulu Archdiocese led by Archbishop John Baptist Odama at State House in Tebe yesterday, 28th September, and discussed about the first beautification ceremony of late Father Giuseppe Ambrosoli, which is to take place on 20th November 2022 at Agogo District in the parish of Kalongo. In the Catholic Church, beautification means a procedure of determining and proclaiming that a deceased person is one of the blessed in two sainthood. Upon beautification, Father Dr. Ambrosoli will become the third blessed person in northern Uganda after Gildo Iroa and Dawidi Okello. 
According to Odama, the Archbishop of Gulu has planned up to 923 million as a budget to organize the beautification ceremony and about 150 million to support Kalongo Ambrosio Memorial Hospital. Your Excellency, we want to express your invitation. It will be a big, big honor that the one gang should be there to see what is happening in a context of a very big event which is taking this nation, the whole of Africa, the whole of the world at large. Yoram Seveni assured that the two roads, the one from Kalak to Patong and Kitugum Kalongo Road, will be worked upon by the Ministry of Works and Sports. We shall, have, we shall have to do it because the, the people there may not manage all these uh, Ugandans who come there and the foreigners. It's, it's not fair to make the church carry all this. So therefore, we are ready to do the, the road. But the church are definitely struggle with this. It's now a whole month. We have a whole month. Nobat Mao, Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, who hails from Acholi sub region, thanked the president for mobilizing the government to fully embrace this international event and for accepting to attend in person. It is an opportunity for you to send a, a strong message to young people to emulate the sacrifice that you referred to earlier of people leaving behind comfort and you yourself belongs in that category. You could have become a bureaucrat, you could have become an intellectual publishing papers in universities, writing books, but you also chose the hard path, just like the Reverend Father Dr. Ambrosoli. We are grateful that you have made a commitment to come in person. We are grateful that you have agreed to put in resources. We are grateful that you have mobilized government ministers to be part of this. Honorable Betty Amonge sent the permanent secretary. We believe that we are working together. Finally, our coming here should also assure you, Your Excellency, that we are united to support whatever the government wants to do. This is a sign of great unity. Among those that attended the meeting was Beatrice Akori Okelo, Minister of State for Works and Transport, Fred Biamukama, the Permanent Secretary of Gender and Labor, Harit Timaya, Anselm Ojaru, Deja University TV. These are the 20 villages I have used. Emioga, a presidential initiative, was rolled out in 2019 as a part of broad government strategy aimed at lifting at least 68% of Ugandans from substance to market-oriented production through wealth and job creation. It is intended to support 18 categories which include market vendors, welders, tax drivers, carpenters, border border riders, women, performing artists and restaurant owners who came together in a form of circles. While meeting Emioga regional coordinators at State House in Tebe, His Excellency the President urged Emioga beneficiaries to specialize and concentrate on their products so that they join the business of import substitution and export production in exemption to just borrowing and returning the money. It is the circle, borrowing and returning, but also developing that product. And then you come to the government, and you say, now, we are producing so much furniture. So what do we do now? We have to see what to do, to how to market. Uh -huh. Then we go to all those products, the, the one we are talking about. Uh, internal distribution and then, and then later on exports. So now regarding the logistics, that's no problem. That's no problem because we are paying so many useless people. Katibano 
the Minister of State for Microfinance and Small Enterprise, Honorable Haruna Kasolo Cheyune, said, Although the program is intended to fight poverty, which cannot be fought in a day, the team of coordinators deployed countrywide is engaged in continuous preaching to achieve the desired objective. He further informed President Museven that they intend to officially launch the program in November this year at Kisoro Independence Grounds, where beneficiaries across the country will exhibit their products. Each circle receives a revolving seed capital of 30 million shillings as a startup fund, and many have grown this fund to a tune of 300 to 400 million shillings, and many are no longer going to money lenders to get credit. Honorable Bokasolo added that they have a proposal to elevate and upgrade the microfinance support center into a people's microfinance development bank where each MUOGA will be a stakeholder. People have embraced saving culture and as we speak today, Your Excellence, a total of 72 billion shillings have been, has been mobilized cut us off, as savings cut us off this program. And Rick says the people are very appreciative. Initially, they didn't understand us. But now, you talk bad about a Mioga, they will hate you for life. They feel it is their program. And the, in fact, wherever we have gone, people have appreciated you, Your Excellency, for the wise leadership, because they say that they have never seen any government program better than the Mioga program. According to the Permanent Secretary Minister of Finance, Mr. Ramadan Gobi, the ministry has observed that the performance of Emioga has improved and they will continue supporting them. Emioga, those who were bad mouthing them, have all uh, been silenced because of the reports now coming from the ground in terms of performance. So we shall continue to support them in a capitalizing them. The Emioga Initiative is financed by Ministry of Finance, Planning and Economics Development through the development of microfinance. The microfinance support center is responsible for the planning management, budgeting, reporting and accountability of all funds disbursed for the program, including disbursement to the groups. The meeting was also attended by the Deputy Executive Director of the Microfinance Support Center, Mrs. Helen Petronia Maska, the Chairperson Emioga Coordinators, Mrs. Rita Namwenge, and other regional coordinators, some of whom gave successful testimonies about the performance of the program in their areas. Sarah Chirabo, Alan Gamol, Ndeji University TV. The high prices of imported raw materials and shipping costs, the uncertainty of fuel supplies in Uganda have triggered inflationary effects in the past three months, causing the prices of goods in the country to go up. The crisis presents difficult economic choices for both government and consumers. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 in the country, Uganda has been experiencing price inflation starting from fuel, commodities, and food prices. Everything has gone up, more especially things that are used in the daily life. Uh, for example, sugar, uh, fuel, and all the other things are very expensive now. Um, me, I deal in stationery. But uh, you find the prices have doubled, which has affected us so much. Uh, we receive uh, fewer customers compared to how they used to be before this whole thing came up. Certainly, the Uganda inflation rose to 9% in August, signalizing a continued increase in price of goods and services, hence critical food shortage, with the majority going without a single meal in a day due to poverty across the country and low income levels. Right now, a bowl of soap is above 5,000, which has really contradicted with my income because my income has remained at the same level. It has not increased, but prices have increased. Therefore, life has become a bit complicated. The skyrocketing prices of most essential goods have not spared commodities like beans, which is at 5,000 a kilo, posho at 4,000 a kilo, soap at 7,000 a bar, rice 
at 5,000 a kilo, sugar at 5,000 a kilo, a litre of petrol at 6,600, wild diesel at 6,400. We, we encourage our government to, to, to give us favor for the common people. Common people, when you, the fuel is high, it means things are going to, to be also high, which is not favoring our common people like me. We are not favored by, 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 by the increase of the high price of the fuel. Since the fuel it is, it is low, Price. It means everything is going to come down and it will favor everybody at large. According to International Monetary Fund, IMF, the recent rise in petrol prices that has put pressure in fuel prices in most of African countries, which is subsequently passed on to the consumers, resulting in a general rise in commodity prices. Agnes Navguao, Anslem Ojaru, Deja University TV. The crested crane is Uganda's national bird and is situated on the center of the national flag with one leg raised, a sign indicating that the country is moving forward. The bird was chosen by Sir Frederick Jackson in 1893 as a symbol to be put on the Union Jack. The idea was approved by George V. of England and was placed on the Union Jack that was flown by the then governor of Uganda during that period. The crested cranes are fond of standing on one leg, and the purpose of this is to keep their bodies warm. They are small in size and have a high body temperature. Through standing on one leg, it helps them to lose temperature easily. Socially, crested cranes are omnivorous birds. They feed on both plants and small animals. Although the birds are highly respected and honored in Uganda, according to Nature Uganda, the number of these birds is continuously declining because of human activities that have negative impacts on their existence. In other parts of Uganda, the destruction of wetlands is displacing the species and this forces many of them to migrate, thus leading to a reduction in their numbers. As Uganda celebrates 60 years of independence, let's continue to save the national cranes and their symbolic role by securing their homes in wetlands and along river banks. Harriet Temaya, Ndeja University TV.